Good morning, everybody. Thursday, the last Thursday in the month of June. Wow, can you believe it? The baseball season is some 80 games in. We're halfway done with the season. That's right. The season is like half over. And so it's time to really take a look at where we are in fantasy, where we are in reality. The two sort of intertwine, right? Because you look at players on winning teams who score a lot of runs. I want them on my fantasy team because their stats are probably better than teams who eh, don't do so well. So let's first of all start off this morning taking a look at the standings. And good morning to everybody. It will be an awesome day. After me today, look out for 10 o'clock, you know, the, 10, the 11 o'clock show. Nothing but fantasy, Lou and Andre. I listened to them. Andre had been gone. She came back last week. Andre and Lou, what a great job. And the information that you guys give out is like, wow. Thorough, thorough, thorough. Love it. And they're coming on after me at 11 o'clock today. So I may finish a little early. In fact, I probably will. Uh, but do stick around for that show at 11. Also, just following them, JJ will be on at 2 o'clock today, followed by Kevin Hastings, Aloha Fantasy, at 3 o'clock today. So, uh, And, of course, don't forget Cam, Money One is twice as nice at 5.30 this afternoon. So uh, good afternoon, Slate. Good morning, Slate. Here we go. The standings, we look at the American League, the Yankees, 52-28. and 28. What a win yesterday over the Blue Jays. They got behind really early. You know, it was five to nothing as we go to the bottom of the second. But the Yankees erupt. They come back. They tie the game. They go ahead. Then the Rays tie the game in the top of the ninth. And here we go. It's time to bring up uh, their second, their shortstop, rather. <laughs> well, second baseman yesterday. He plays all over the place. Uh, Glaber Torres playing second base yesterday. He went three for five. He bloops a single into right field, driving in the game-winning run. It was a walk-off for the Yankees as they beat the Blue Jays 8-7 to seven, to move seven games, seven full games in front of the Tampa Bay Rays, who lost in Minnesota last night 6-4. to four. And the Boston Red Sox are now nine games back. Uh, they lost at home yesterday to the White Sox 7-8. to eight. I want to talk about all three of these teams and all three of these games uh, for just a moment before we move on in the standings. For the Yankees yesterday, has there been a better hitter in the American League uh, than DJ LeMahieu? Uh, he's hitting 336. He went two for four yesterday, two RBIs, and all the malarkey about LeMahieu can only hit in Coors. Guess what? LeMahieu hasn't played a single game in Coors all year long. That's right, he hasn't, and he's but he's killing it for the Yankees. Uh, it's time to uh, keep. LeMahieu, Judge, 3-for-5. Looks like he's finally waking up. Uh, Voigt went 2-for-5. Gregorius starting to heat up. But here's a player I'm not big on, and I think it's time to cut bait, and that's Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks has just not produced at all. He got that 7-year, 70 million contract in the offseason. He has not produced. He's hitting 202, and in this lineup, there's really no excuse for that. Uh, if I'm an Aaron Hicks owner, I'm getting ready to cut bait on Aaron Hicks. Uh, I just don't see uh, anything promising to improve. I went to see the Yankees this weekend, saw them in person, and uh, not impressed. If you owned Aaron Hicks, if you can trade him, do so. If there's somebody available on the waiver wire, cut him and let's move on. But Glaber Torres is another story. Glaber Torres is now up to 291 on the year, three for five yesterday. Torres had hit his 47th RBI, just pitched uh, or hit a, had a well of a game hitting the ball. Uh, the Yankees just seem to be you know on a roll. Depending on the scenario, they continue to to whip out the wins, and uh, they pick a big win of yesterday. Now here's a pitcher that I don't want to tell you to do with him: Big Maple, Jim pa James Paxton, four and a third yesterday, six earned runs, three strikeouts. He gave up three home runs. A total bomb in the first inning to Lourdes Gurriel. Uh, Paxton has been so inconsistent. And hasn't that been the theme of top-line pitchers this year, save Max Scherzer? Inconsistency. And, and so what do you do with uh, 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 James Paxton? I, I, if you trade him, you're not going to get full value. Uh, Blake Snell in the same boat as 
Paxton, and you can name so many other pitchers who fall in line with that. You know, you got your Buellers and your Scherzers who have been outstanding, but what do you do with a Paxton? Are you interested in trading him? Who would want him? Maybe there's a Yankee fan in your league who believes in him beyond all doubt, and you can make that trade. I might want to do it. I may want to do it. Now, I think you can get some wins in the second half. The Yankees are going to win games, but for for statistical purposes, for fantasy, Paxton has not been what you bargained for. For the Blue Jays, there are some players here that I think are worthy of having on your fantasy team, and one I'm going to mention who could be set for a big second half. Okay, first of all, you got Gavin Biggio, who's leading off, uh, certainly worthy of an ad in fantasy. I love Lourdes Gurriel. Okay, we talked about Lourdes Gurriel yesterday and went through his stats. Well, he didn't let me down. Yesterday he went three for five. He homered. He's uh, four RBIs. Start of the year, Lourdes Gurriel was hitting 143 after a couple of weeks, and the Blue Jays sent him down. Yeah, get his head straight, work on his mechanics, put him in the outfield. So he went away from the infield, went to the outfield. He came back up. Since coming back up, he's hitting 370. On the year now, he's hitting 304. Lourdes Gurriel is a gotta have in fantasy. He he is aggressive at the plate, seems to know the strike zone, and he hit a ball yesterday off James Paxton that I thought was a fly ball to left. And it went out of Yankee Stadium into left center field. Okay, deepest one of the deepest parts of the park, and he hit it out. Very impressive kid. So that's the Yankees. The 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 Rays. All right, the Rays have lost two in a row. They lose to Minnesota last night. And what's going on with Tampa? Okay, first of all, we know Blake Snell has not been effective. Has not pitched Blake Snellish at all this year. Uh, they just, I don't know, the bullpen, Alvarado's been out. The bullpen is in shambles. Uh, Their hitting is inconsistent. You know, Brandon Lau can be hot. He can be cold. Tommy Pham, similar. Uh, Austin Meadows has been cold lately. He did go two for three last night. I I look for the Rays to fall back a little. I look for the, the Boston Red Sox to make a push, to move into second place in the second half. Uh, and there's several reasons for that. First of all, I just talked about the Rays' inconsistent pitching. Well, what about Boston? Boston's being inconsistent, but they're starting to hit the baseball. And yesterday, they I told you they were behind 5-3. Uh, to three. Then after the 7th, it was 6-4. to four. The Red Sox scored 3 in the 8th to go up, but then they give up 2 in the ninth. Here's what Boston's going to do. They're going to get a closer. And I found him a solution. Alex Colomay. Yeah, Alex Colomay, who pitched in Boston yesterday against the Red Sox. Why is not Colomay a good fit to come into Boston and give it a shot? Okay, certainly we know one thing. We know that Matt Barnes blew his sixth save of the year yesterday, his second in a row. He's got a 419 ERA. And how many Red Sox fans do you know right now who have a lot of confidence in Matt Barnes? How many? I, I, I certainly don't. Sale was not himself yesterday. He went six innings, gave up five earned. He did strike out 10. So the strikeouts are there. And hitting-wise, well, the Red Sox are on fire. Devers went three for five again. He's at 322 average. Bogart's two for five. He's at 298. J.D. Martinez yesterday, wow, two for five, three RBIs. His average is up to 287. He hit his 17th home run yesterday for the Red Sox. Michael Chavez is still hovering. I'm not carried away with him, but he's doing an adequate job. He went two for five yesterday, hitting 263 on the year. My point being, the Red Sox can hit enough. Their starting pitching can be adequate, but their bullpen is horrible. They've got to make a trade. And so look for a column A. The White Sox are out of it. Look for a green with Detroit to go to Boston. Okay, I could see either of these being great fits for the Red Sox. If either of these players are available, I'd take a risk on them. I think I'd go pick them up because I think Boston is going to be making that move sooner than later. Again, this morning, 80 games in, Boston 82 games in. They're nine games out behind the Yankees in the American League East. Now, wild card-wise, they're right there. Okay, you got 
You got Tampa at 45 and 35, 10 games over 500. Cleveland, eight games over 500. Texas, eight games over 500. And Boston, six games over 500. So Boston trails the number one wild card by only two games. Okay, so they are certainly players, and they're coming up going to London to play the Yankees Saturday and Sunday. Those are big games. Those are huge games. Chris Sale won't be pitching, it doesn't look like. Maybe, I guess he, they could move it around, but he pitched yesterday. I guess he could pitch Sunday, but I don't see it. I just think these are huge games for Boston. They don't want to be 11 games down to the Yankees getting close to the All-Star break. In the Central, the Twins, they lead the try by eight and a half. They won. They did lose Eddie Rosario last night to an ankle injury, but everything I'm reading this morning shows that that is a minor injury, maybe just a sprain. Don't look for him to play today, but look for him possibly back over the weekend, okay? The Twins just continue to hit. Arias started last night and led off going two for three. Cruz, Nelly Cruz heating back up, three for four. Rosario was two for two before he came out of the game. This group of guys, they are hitters. Odorizzi, not a great start last night. Could he be coming back down to earth? Probably so. He went five and a third, Six earned runs, seven strikeouts. His ERA on the year now is 273. He did give up two home runs last night, but the beat seems to go on for the Twins as they continue to lead the division uh, by eight and a half over the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland yesterday, let's talk about the tribe, can we? How about Trevor Bauer, Andy? Trevor Bauer yesterday. He got to win some kudos. He went six and two thirds. Only gave up three hits. He won his sixth game, and he struck out 12 Kansas City Royals. Yes, he did. Uh, great pitching performance by Trevor Bauer. Uh, Lynn Door went three for four. Santana got a hit. Kipnis got a hit. Kipnis is a good ad in fantasy. Get him cheap. You can probably pick him up. Bauer's back in the lineup. One for four with a home run. So the Twins, the Cleveland Indians... And can't you just see Cleveland making a run there? I can just see it coming. This weekend, they are in Baltimore while the Twins, let's see, where are the Twins this weekend? Give me just a second. The Twins. I'm looking. They, let's see. Come on, Arnie. The Twins are in Chicago. So you can look for a lot of runs to be scored there, probably. But uh, I can just I just feel it. Trevor Bauer pitching well, Cleveland hitting well. They're only eight and a half out. They're eight games over five hundred. We'll see how that one pulls out. In the West, Houston leading Texas by five and a half. I told you they lost to Pittsburgh yesterday, fourteen to twelve. If I didn't tell you, I'm telling you now. Fourteen to two was the final score. Pittsburgh over Houston. What's going on with the Astros? They've lost eight of ten. They lost three of four this weekend in New York. Prior to that, they were swept by the Reds. The Astros are struggling. Do you see a move being made? Could Kyle Tucker be coming up sooner than later? Hmm, something to think about, right? I could see that happening. The Astros have just not been scoring runs at the clip they are accustomed to. Now, they've got some players who've been hitting the ball fairly well lately. But uh, Springer back last night, first game back off the I.L., he went three for four. Altuve, one for four. Bregman, one for three. Brantley, one for four. Alvarez hitless last night, but he's still at 3-4 on the, on the season. Reddick went one for four. Tyler White continues to get starts, and here's what I could see the Astros doing. I could see the Astros calling up Kyle Tucker, Moving Guriel to first base, let him stay there, or moving Alvarez to first base. Alvarez's natural position is first. Kyle Tucker was player of the month in the minor leagues in the month of May. He's hit over 20 home runs. He's hitting over 400 his last 10 games. He's red hot right now. Houston needs to score only two runs yesterday. Might it be Kyle Tucker time in Houston? Houston again leads Texas by five and a half in the division. The Rangers have won four in a row. They lead Oakland by seven. Oakland's won seven out of ten. And the Angels, they're only nine out, and they're winners of three in a row. Let's take a look at the National League. 
The Atlanta Braves continue to pour it on. They've won two straight over the Cubs. They play in Chicago. 